Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and I how are I was about to say something about myself. How are you? How are you doing? It seems that there's some lively chat going on about something about Denver, Colorado. To to provide some additional context, right before the camera went on, Anna was saying all about how we should totally like go out and like travel places and whatnot. Um, and as it turns out, it seems that every single flight that we can find uh, seems to go to Denver, Colorado, of all places. Uh, I don't know. She wants to go travel, and so we're going to try to travel places. Uh, it's something that we're going to try to budget for. Uh, COVID is still happening, but you know what? That doesn't be, seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. So well, I hope everybody's day has been fine. OBS is having a weird thing right now where I can't tell if my volume is actually coming out. So I hope to goodness that my microphone is on. And if it's not, I hope somebody tells me that they can't hear me. But other than that, let's get things going here. My name is Cameron. I like to mix cocktails on Wednesdays. I saw there were a lot of, there were a couple there are a couple new people who popped in over the course of the last week or so. And so let me just give a quick rundown of what we do around here. And so what we're doing, what we're doing is we make cocktails on Wednesday. It's fun. Sometimes my own creations, sometimes other words. I'm a firmware developer by day. I like to entertain people by night sometimes. I have not had a lot of sleep recently. So I've recently done some introspection to try to make sure that I, one, get my sleep because Anna wants me to sleep, because if I don't sleep, I'm apparently a cranky individual. I'm the kind of person who apparently says things that they don't mean to say in the middle of the night when he is unconscious. I am not a sleepwalker, I am a sleep talker. And so oftentimes I think, say things that I don't mean. Either it's something that is just awkward and nobody wants to hear that, or it's something very mean. And I will say it to my fiance, I'm like, Anna, could you please wake me up in the morning? And she's like, no, I'm not gonna wake you up in the morning because all you do is you curse at me when I try to wake you up before your alarm. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I don't mean to do that. <laughs> I have no control over my actions when I'm unconscious. I don't know, like how, if there's any psychologists out there, I have a serious question. If I am cursing at the people I love while I'm asleep, how do I stop that? How do I prevent myself from making these actions? I don't know, maybe I'm just stressed. I'm not so sure, but hopefully when I get my sleep schedule back on track, that should be okay. Oh, Lorelai had a friend who was in Colorado and she agreed on the why go there front. Really? I mean, from all I know about Colorado is it's at a very high altitude. So people just kind of pass out when they go there because they're not, they're not familiar with that altitude. There's less oxygen up there. So your body will quite uh, frankly, like pass out from what I've been told, especially if you go on hiking trips. And also like weed has been legal in Colorado for a while now, like 420 blaze it. But uh, you know, if that's a reason to go to Colorado, nice dude. Nice. I know some people who in Philly who totally ride that train. But it's been a really good week so far, I'll be honest. It's um it's been it's been kind of all over the place. I've been so I had to take a personal day the other day because because of my sleep schedule thing. I will admit, I oftentimes put a lot of things first over my own well-being and health. I put work first, I put streams first, I put hobbies and whatnot, other people first, and, and I haven't been putting myself first. So I've been very, very tired. I woke up the other day and I was like, wow, I feel terrible. I need to, I need to like just sleep in for the day. And also it didn't help that like I had a bit of a stomach bug that morning and I just wasn't feeling so good. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to sleep. And apparently, as I've been told by my fiance, if you can sleep more than 12 hours straight in a single day, then there's something wrong with you. And there was something wrong to me because I straight up slept for about 14 hours straight. I took a look at, I have a Fitbit that I wear. Uh, and so when I looked at my app, it was like, yeah, congrats for you. You slept 14 hours yesterday. It was like, how the hell did I do that? I definitely got up somewhere in between. Cameron, I think. Oh my God, what? If you want to go to Belize, you have to go to Colorado. This just in. If you want to go to Belize, as in the country, you have to go to Colorado first. Why the hell? There's something special about Colorado. Uh, and it's not... Anna's having a hard time over there. Frontier Air Airlines, ladies, gentlemen, and those in between and beyond. If you fly Frontier to anywhere, you're gonna have to go to Colorado, unless whether or not you Florida like it or not. Unless Florida. Florida is apparently a notable exception. I've learned that today, indeed. But it's been a lovely week so far. Oh, Anna, you don't need to apologize. You live here too. The other day she was like, oh, I really wanna make pretzels, so there might be a little bit of pots and pans noise. I was like, dude, you live here too. Like, I don't have a studio space. Therefore, if the problem is there's too many background noises and whatnot, I live with someone, I coexist. I feel that, but I also love that. So take that, this is not me. But yeah, I got really tired the other day. I took a day off, I had to uh, use a sick day for that. It's a good thing. Body first, health first, that's good. But of course, uh, over the past couple days as well, I've been trying to uh, trying to go out and do more things and whatnot. So there was a big basketball game that apparently happened over the weekend. I don't watch a lot of basketball. And so it was funny to see there was, I don't do much of the balls of baskets. However, there was a Duke playing, 
and there was a, a state university playing against each other, a great duke and a university of sorts, and Anna has a classmate who graduated from the university area, and who has a boyfriend who graduated from the duke. I don't know how you graduate from a place of nobility. I guess he's a king now, I'm not exactly sure. Haha, <laughs> puns intended. But so, they are in a relationship, the teams played against each other, it was quite a fiasco. It was hilarious to watch not only the game, but also the couple who were just kind of going at it the whole time. It was really, really funny. By the way, this is game in sign language, not pumping the fists together, but breaking them apart. I just realized I did that. I did that well. Um, so it was really, really fun. And we actually had, this is, this is leading up to something, I promise, but we had some very, very awesome food over there with a bit of a potluck. We brought some, we brought some charcuterie, I believe is a term. We brought some cheese. We brought some crackers. It was a lovely time. It was great. A little bit of pepperonis and stuff. That was wonderful. There was good drinks to be had, good fun to be had, and there was also this amazingly constructed, cooked, concocted, I don't know, tray of honey barbecue wings, and I was like, oh my god, they were so, so, so good. There were also some vegan options there as well, which were just absolutely, absolutely hit the spot. I think we had vegan wings, which were kind of like these, like, like squares or prisms of, it might have been tofu, it might have been like an imitation meat type thing, but it was lovely. It tasted amazing, and it was fun times all around. That was great. I also was able to, uh, I was also able to see some of my fraternity pals over on Monday. They got some rush events going on right now. Shout out to the bros at Theta Chi. I still love you guys. I'm just not there right now, and I don't come around very often, but I want to come around more often, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to rein in that part of my social life yet again. At least I'm attempting to. Lorelai says that she's been getting up at 6.30 a.m. to give buffer time to get ready for the 8 a.m. shifts for breaking cookies. I feel that. Basically what I do is I get up at 6.30 a.m. as well to give myself buffer time to get ready for the day, do my morning routine, to get onto my morning calls at 7.45 a.m. in the morning, and then take my bike ride or walk ride to work for my 8.45 meeting in the morning. I got meetings, but they're fun meetings. I like the people that I work with. In addition, what I was saying that tofu being squares would make sense. It might have been a tofu thing. Not so sure, but it came in this awesome, like, really spicy buffalo sauce. It was great. Flash forward to just the other day, I was at work, having a good time. This was Monday. I took the day off on Tuesday. But on Monday, I was having a great time. I was doing my worky thing. I was listening to some music, watching the YouTube video. I was watching my cocktail guy. And I haven't watched him in a while. I just, I think our, I think my opinions are diverging. And so I was like, oh, I don't want to watch my cocktail guy. He's different opinion than me. But we need to be able to get past that in our lives. So I decided to watch again. I was pleasantly surprised. There were actually some things on there that I really, really liked listening to and cocktail recipes to be found, which is why I started watching him in the first place. Like, it's okay. We're all humans too. We all have our buttholes. Opinions. They're dirty. They stink, but everyone's got them. It's like buttholes. It's a, I don't know who told me that once upon a time, but. I don't like saying that, it just feels disturbing. In any case, and so he mentioned something about creating uh, an old-fashioned cocktail. This is this is Greg, by the way. He does a show called HTD, How to Drink. I don't know why I'm being so vague about this. He's an awesome guy. I love his content and whatnot. And honestly, a bit of an inspiration for me in general. But so he talked about get it, doing old fashions with various different liqueurs, one of them being this little chili liqueur, Ancho Reyes, which I've seen before. We've, we've been here before. Calidad, altissima calidad. It's spicy, it's spicy liqueur. But he was wondering whether he could make a, make an old fashioned with it, which is basically just spirit plus bitters plus citrus and sugar, if you need the sugar, like simple syrup and stuff like that. And so after he made this drink, he was like, oh, this would go really, really well with like honey. Cause like honey and spice together is like a thing that people put together. And I was like, I had an idea. I think I have an idea. So I basically went to the internet and I was like, hey internet, I'm trying to figure out if I have a cocktail idea that nobody else has gotten yet. And they, uh, when I looked up honey syrup and specifically chili liqueur, Ancho Reyes, there was a cocktail out there called the Bee Sting by Honey and Birch. I'll probably link it in the VOD that comes out afterwards. I tried to look for their socials to be able to give them a proper call out and I couldn't. They were like, oh, did you make this recipe? Share it on Instagram. But you don't have an Instagram. So I don't know how I'm supposed to tag you. Instagram doesn't support links or whatever. There'll be links if you're interested to the original of that. However, I had this idea. I was like, oh my God, I think I can make something different enough from this to call it my own. And so tonight I bring to you another with an X original that I like to call Honey, Let's Barbecue. So let's get right into it. It's inspired by the honey barbecue wings that I had over the weekend at our pal's house. It was a lovely time. The game was wonderful and I very much enjoyed myself and the camaraderie that we were all able to share as we watched the orange ball on the, street, on the screen go back and forth and sometimes douch in between and sometimes go way up and into an orange hoop and then sometimes back again and then sometimes off court. Basketball is a crazy sport. There's always stuff going on. 
But so this cocktail is basically inspired by those honey barbecue wings that I had. I don't know if it's gonna take, as per usual, I just kind of do things by the book and if I don't have a book to follow, I just kind of feel things out. Maybe it'll taste good, maybe not. I don't know, we'll see about that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a couple of ice cubes in my glass, as we do often with shaking drinks and whatnot. This one's just gonna get a large cube, large cube, got a large cube in there, and some smaller cubes because I still cannot, for the life of me, figure out how to properly crack a cube. It's, it's something that I'm still working on. I'm a novice bartender. I am only 24. I have many more years of my life that I can use for drinking and cocktail mixology. One day. Oh, Lorelai stares at honey mustard oddly at spicy honey while resisting jokes about video game lava often looking like it should be tasty, like forbidden honey when it's not boiling Kool-Aid. Dude, I totally get that. I, I get that. I feel like there have been, I can't think of which games, but there was definitely at least one. Honestly, I think Zelda Breath of the Wild lava doesn't really look like lava. It just kind of looks like this shiny gold mess of hot, maybe? I don't know. The only reason that I know that it's something that I shouldn't jump into is because I've jumped into it and I've died and then I've gone back to the surface and like, no, 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 don't put your feetsies in that. You're not supposed to be doing that. In any case, the first ingredient that I'm gonna, I'm gonna add to here is one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of mezcal. I was inspired to use mezcal because I was trying to think to myself, what do you usually do when you make honey barbecue? I've never made honey barbecue wings at all, but I imagine like you sometimes do like a like a mesquite smoke type solution. I know you can. I know I've looked at a couple of barbecue sauce, like honey barbecue sauce recipes that call for liquid smoke. Technically, I think you might be able to put liquid smoke a little bit into a cocktail. I don't have any of that. I found this on Monday. I did not have the time to go out to my store and get any sort of liquid smoke or smoke type thing. So I thought to myself, what is like the smokiest thing that I have in my collection? And to be honest, it's this mezcal here. Um, the last time I used it was in a, a citrus-based drink, and it was like it was like really smoky, and it was really really good, almost a little varnishy. It had some it had some really really awesome characteristics to it. So I was like, I think this is gonna be perfect in something that's supposed to remind you of i don't think it's going to taste like honey barbecue wings but maybe more reminiscent of like the honey barbecue sauce that you would like marinate those wings in i would think uh, i'm not i'm not so sure we'll have to find out it could very well be completely unbalanced and a disgusting drink that definitely should have been workshopped more beforehand but this isn't about perfection this is about exploration that's the spirit we have here and if i like it then that's good then somebody else might like it it's all about whether or not you like what you're drinking if you don't like what you're drinking trash that shit. get some water I mean, get something better. Request to the bartender, like, I mean, I'm not the kind of person who is incredibly, like, turned away from being like, excuse me, waiter, this food really isn't to my liking. Either maybe you can send me the menu or perhaps send it back to be cooked a little bit farther. Don't get me wrong. I'm not the kind of person who's going to be like, and I want it taken off of my bill. I'm not going to do that. However, if you don't like what you're eating, just get, some, get something else. Whatever. I'll eat it. I'm a bit of a trash can in terms of I will eat pretty much anything thrown at me. Honestly, though, it is. It's... I just like the way food tastes. Even if it's burnt, I will still eat it. It's probably something wrong with me, but alas, I, uh, I, I, I'm not very picky. I'm just not very picky. Why would one drink smoke? Is it different than damp slash fluid wood ash? Technically, like, I don't know what liquid smoke really is. I don't think they actually took liquid and compressed it into a liquid form. It's probably just a brand name type thing. I think it's just supposed to taste like wood that was on fire once upon a time maybe i don't know i've never actually had it before i've also never cooked wings so maybe i'm the bad i'm not the right person to be making this kind of cocktail because i'm like oh it tastes like honey barbecue wings no it doesn't maybe it does i'm not exactly sure the next ingredient that i have it's, it's basically it's the top two ingredients that are really going to make things pull together it's make things pull together i said word now today yes i did the mezcal which is the smoky part and the honey syrup which is i got one ounce of that and th or 30 milliliters which is going to be the honey part of it if i can find my oh i have it over here it's a syrup i try to keep these things fresh so it's in my cooler please excuse me as i go back to my cooler it's in my little container here it's beautiful it keeps for quite a while it's a beautiful like it's a beautiful golden thing golden brown type thing i don't know it looks like honey but it's a it's a lot less viscous than honey would usually be and i want an ounce of that if i can get this open i did i did get it open it was really stuck though but alas now usually usually like um usually when i make my syrups it's like a one-to-one -one ratio it was one part of honey to one part of water it's just like honey but it's a little watered down and it's um it's more it's less viscous than it was it's a lot easier to pour i'm gonna try my best not to like make an absolute mess i'm gonna do it over top so i don't make a total mess i want to try to get an ounce of that and that was absolutely perfect wow wow 
that was probably the easiest thing I had done all week. It's great. Cola color. It's kind of is it cola color. I believe that. It's like if I hold it up to the light, it's a little more, a little more ambery. I don't know. I'm still attempting to work on my lighting setup over here. If anybody has suggestions, I would appreciate it. But um, I do. I have been trying to get some more lights. Uh, different, not more lights, different lights, lights that are more controllable. Um, the ones that I currently have that face the bar are one color fits all, and I need some adjustability there, just like the one I have on my desk. But uh, it seems that they're sold out. They're completely sold out of the light bulb that I want, so I guess I'm going to have to wait out on that. And actually, come to think of it, it uh, um, I have totally forgot to mention there are some improvements coming to the show, or rather one improvement in particular. One of the things that I've run into is the fact that I know from here that my microphone is way down there so technically i know i know that my voice is a little it's a little dialed back it's a little more echoey from this perspective on this side of the bar and so one of the things that i really really wanted to do was grab myself a, a, a microphone that i can put right on my lapel here a lavalier microphone so that one it sounds a little clearer on this side of the bar so that it doesn't sound like i'm on the other side of the room if I face another direction, but it'll also allow me the, for the ability to be able to kind of walk around my, I'm not just going to be constrained to wherever that microphone is. I should be able to like walk around and do more than just behind the bar or behind the desk. Maybe I'll cook something or maybe Anna and I will play a board game. I don't exactly know. It should be cool. It should be really cool. But huzzah for more lights and more improvements. And yeah, a bit more yellowy than Cola's color, but deep colors that change with light are very fun, especially. I think it's got to do with the fact that there's a bunch of, it's sugary, there's a bunch of sugar crystals in there. It makes it a very dense substance. So naturally the light is not gonna pass through it and refract as easily as it would, let's say water or like a glass prism. I don't know, sciencey words. I could very well be wrong there. The next ingredient that I need to add to this shaker is a little bit of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters to be exact. And for that, obviously, I need to get some lemons out here. Specifically, ones that I can juice. And I have I have multiple lemons that I can juice. It's not that difficult to do. Just give a little, give it a little slice. Easy, easy, easy. And then I have my this one's a peeled lemon. It's um it's because I was experimenting yesterday. Every once in a while, I like to it's, 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 because because of the fact that like I feel like I'm on a tight schedule, which is totally my own fault. I, it's nobody's fault but my own. But I tend to like kind of do things last minute, which I'm sure it shows. I know it does. Uh, but I was actually to get, able to give myself a little bit more time this time around. So I kind of plan things out very ever so slightly to be able to to at least get an idea of like how this garnish is going to go. Because I usually like to plan for that if I can. And actually, I'm gonna need the other side of the lemon for this one. Wow been a while since I've had to use more than one lemon or perhaps I should have squeezed this lemon beforehand uh, to get more juice out of it probably do those mics have wires to worry about I've seen folks use them and who forget to put them on so the one that I'm looking into is actually a wireless one it's like the ones that I used to use back in high school theater where it just kind of uh, the ones I used back in high school theater were like on my face around this area um, however these ones these ones are this one that goes here, there's a little battery pack on my butt. It'll go in my pocket. You'll never be, you'll be none the wiser than the fact that there's one there. And then it'll transmit to my computer. It'll be great. Hey yo, hey yo, hi yo. Very cool. And hi Astro, what's up dude? Or should we say, Domstar, the boy, the boy is here. I have three quarters of an ounce of my lemon juice going into my cocktail shake. Ah! And I'll put that cutting board away for potentially later. Not so sure. It's a wonderful day. It's a wonderful day to be a star. It's never a bad day to be a star. The next thing that I need to add to my cocktail shaker is going to be three quarters of an ounce of Ancho Reyes chili liqueur. That's the spice that comes along with it. I know that when you go to like Buffalo Wild Wings, if you order the honey barbecue sauce, it's really one of the milder options. It's not really supposed to be spicy. However, I love things that are spicy. I love things that have a kick to it and flavor. If you just put like straight up pepper oil on and tell me to drink that i'd be like ew this is just all spice there's like barely any flavor here i don't like that i don't like things that just burn my mouth it's got to burn my mouth with purpose it has to go into my mouth make me feel like i'm on fire and want to like puke or something but also taste good and for that i love i love buffalo sauce buffalo sauce tastes wonderful i think it's a perfect example at least in my opinion some people say that it's way too vinegary and i totally get that but i i grew into liking pickles so i've learned to appreciate a nice vinegar every once in a while what you making today? Honestly, same. Honestly, same on the spice thing, I hope. We are making a With an X original, which I kind of think that sounds really odd. It's something I came up with. Maybe it'll be okay. It's inspired 
by Honey Barbecue Wings. And if it if it properly portrays the meth the message that it's Honey Barbecue E, then I think I've done a good job. Now I'm using three quarters of an ounce of this Ancho Reyes chili liqueur, which is spicy. That may be too much. I'm not exactly sure. This is this is a new creation. I don't exactly know how it balances. This is this is the type of thing where like of the people I've watched on the internet and in my own life of people who like create their own cocktails, it's a process. It's not just it's not necessarily like the rule is you work at these things. You have an epiphany. You try to make see what works out. The rule is that. The exception is uh, I just put a couple of things together and it worked out perfectly or I can't taste the alcohol anymore so I'm going to put that in my restaurant. I don't know. I usually don't do, do things so planned out like that. I'm a very I would consider myself a more like spontaneous person. I'm like, "Uh, this would seem cool together. Swish swish swish. I wonder if it's good." I don't know. So we're going to we're, we're this is the this is a this is a um this is a story of exploration. It's a story of, did we do it right? Is there a right answer? We're not so sure, but if it tastes good, then that's fine. An experiment, indeed. A take on the bee sting inspired by a guy making an old fashioned with spicy liqueur, commenting that his re result tasted like it would go well with honey. Absolutely. She had, Laura and I pumped up, uh, summed it up perfectly. Basically, I saw, basically I went to a basketball game, had some honey barbecue wings, thought that was a really great idea, then saw somebody else make a spicy cocktail and said this would go well with honey. Then I went on the internet and found this this uh, website, Honey and Birch, who did a bee sting cocktail which used gin and ancho reyes chili liqueur and honey syrup. And I was like, ooh, but I want to make it more smoky like those wings. So I swapped some things out and, well, TLDR, uh, a mega new cocktail. It's supposed to be spicy and sweet, maybe. I don't know. Three quarters of an ounce. Ancho Reyes chili liqueur. Let's put that in my glass. Woo! Before I run out of steam. Honestly, I'm not going to run out of steam. I slept like over 20 hours the past couple days, honestly. If I run out of steam, then there is really something wrong with me, and I should probably go see a doctor about it. Alas, I feel okay. Okay enough to continue doing this show and continue going to school. I almost said going to school in the morning to go to work in the morning. I enjoy the work that I do. I actually had a very, very pleasant day at work today. It was really, really cool. So in the, in the beginning, my uh, my boss was a part of a webinar today. And so a couple of us got together and set up like his AV setup. We got his, we used my microphone. We, we set up a camera. We set up a ring light. Well, the camera was on his computer. We set up props in the background. It was a killer webinar. Like, we absolutely killed it up there. My company killed it. It was awesome. It was really cool to watch. And plus, like, I felt I felt like I was contributing. And that's a really positive feeling. If crediting B sting is mistaken, apologize. If it if it's perhaps this is B X thing, and I don't know. This one's called Pun intended, honey, let's barbecue. With a comma in between. I don't know if that 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 like gels well with the internet at large, but there's no smoke, no steam, just normal air for party balloons. Indeed, there's no smoke, there's no mirrors, there's no lasers to make things look like there's magic happening here. It's just science. It will always be science. Nice! I love that. Uh, and the last two, the last two things that I need in my cocktail... Two things? It's two things. It's one thing, actually. The last thing that I need in my cocktail shaker is two dashes of saline solution. There was a cocktail that I did a while ago. I don't remember what it was, but it called for... Like, there's... I got a particular collection of recipes from somebody and there was often a call for saline solution in the drink and i was like i would never think of using salt in a drink aside from like a bloody mary or something that's supposed to taste like savory i guess but i thought to myself like you know in a lot of honey barbecue recipes that i just kind of perused on the internet oftentimes you call for some sort of salty spicy ingredient so i was like all right let's add a little bit of salt to there to see if it gives another like uh like like uh oh my god what's the term perspective another another angle another angle another angle of this drink as it evolves and the taste evolves over time or at least that's what i hope it will do so i got some saline solution down here it's it's water and it's water and salt that's all it is and i'll shake it up a little bit to make sure it's all like constituted and whatever i remember that drink do we i hope we remember that drink my memory fleets me i mean yeah normally salt is just put on the rim it's true it's true i mean dude the um oh my god i love when things are put on the rim I like the idea of like uh, rimmed drinks. Uh, it's just like, I'm not very good at it. Uh, supposedly there's a process. You're supposed to put, supposed to put like, like simple syrup on the rim or you maybe put a little lime juice on the rim. Nothing ever seems to stick for me. Maybe it's just because I'm just, I'm too, I'm like, I'm too conservative with how much I put on there. Like I, I won't d completely like douse the plate in salt. I'll be like, uh, here's a little bit for the sides. Not much is going to get used anyway. Honestly, that may be working against me here. I have this little pipette thing. I don't have a dasher for this because I just don't, but I'm going to take about a puff a puff of this pipette, one dash. And then I'll do another puff of the pipette. Two dashes. Two puffs is a pipette. That's my two dashes in this case. It's probably more than a dash. I 
only comes out to about three and a half dashes if we want to be technical here. But I don't think we need to worry about that too much. So we're gonna shake our. Sorry, I have my. This is this is totally an original. I have all my notes right here. I don't have an internet to go to for this one. But this one has mezcal, honey syrup, a one-on-one -on -one ratio, fresh lemon juice, Ancho Rios chili liqueur, and a little bit of saline solution, shaken up and then strained out into a cocktail glass. Let's do it. I'm gonna try to do a trick. Watch this. Wow, that was awesome. Maybe someday it'll be something more cohesive. Let's shake that sucker up. Now, supposedly, there is a lot of talk out there about what the proper, like, um, what the proper shaking technique is. I don't know what it is. I have not read any articles on it. I choose to keep myself in the dark so that one day, perhaps, I'll be able to develop my own proper shaking technique. That, or I've just been too lazy to do so, which oftentimes I am. Hey, it still worked. It totally did. I love that. Now, I'm going to take my yoga blocks out. As you may have noticed, most of this setup over here has actually just been, been made up of a collection of well thought out do it yourself like solutions and then a bunch of other solutions that i was like oh i need to make that work what do i have uh a yoga blocks so i'm gonna take out my glass where's my glass glass is down here hello hi there it's cameron he's got glass it's great it's beautiful it's wonderful i love that um put this as centered as i possibly can i think that works perfectly I wish I could get a little bit closer, but I don't really have anything else to put it on top of. Oh, wait a minute, I got this thing. Wait, 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 wait. I have my my soldering bag. Let's see if that gets a more proper, oh, that's kind of cocked to the side. That's unpleasant. How about this screwdriver container? We make things work because we have to, because I want to. There's a lot of stuff going on outside right now and I want no part of it. All right, let's just, mm, this is still kind of awkward. You know what? I'm going with it. I'm taking it. That's how we're gonna do it. All right. I need to put a big old ice cube in here and keep things cold. Nobody told me to. I just want to. I love the way big ice cubes look. Ice cube. Nice. Ooh. It fell in quite nicely. I kind of like that. And then we're just gonna strain it. I'm gonna strain it and pour it lightly over top of the little thing here. It's gonna come out a nice yellowy color. Honestly, if it could have come out more orange, as I imagine honey barbecue to look, I feel like it would have been way more satisfying, but this is what we have. It actually kind of looks more like honey than barbecue, but really, depending on what wings and how you did it and whatever, it's great. The Tesseract. The Tesseract. It's beautiful. Cameron always raising the X bar. Always raise it. Oh, I pronounced the X. That's a problem. That's a shot. If you pronounce the X, it's a shot. <laughs> Just kidding. I will not hold anybody to that. Not, in my, not even myself. Uh, yes. And now, actually, I guess I should zoom out a little bit. Mm, you know what? This angle is better for that. I should go back to this one. Because the final thing that I want to do is I want to take a little lemon, I want to take a little lemon wheel. I want to put that inside. So excuse me as I cut a lemon wheel. Uh, actually, first thing I got to do is, oh, wait, I forgot the thing that I needed to do for my garnish. Excuse me, I forgot my peeler. I need my peeler. My peeler, my peeler, where are you, my peeler? Oh, it's in the dishwasher. I found it. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm back. Don't worry about it. Found my peeler. Gonna peel a lemon. Peeling a lemon. Take a look at those oils if you can see them. If you can't, oh, that's unfortunate. Ooh, nice. Eventually I'll figure out the proper camera angles to do this on, but I don't have that yet. We're gonna save that for a rainy day. Not really. It's not really a rainy day. Now I just need to cut a wheel of my lemon. I'm gonna do that down here in my bar. It's very quick. It's not complicated and it doesn't really require a show of its own. However, I will definitely, if I'm not careful enough, completely knock over my drink. No, the Tesseract has fallen. All right, this is getting very wobbly and I am so sorry for that. My table still does not stand upon its own. Actually, I am, stay, stay, stay. Stay where you are. Nope, don't spill. Don't spill. It's a little bit longer. A little bit more. All right, perfect. Nobody saw that. There we go. There's a lemon in there now. That wasn't a problem. That wasn't difficult. Nobody struggled with that. It was all in your minds. That's all it was. What did I miss? I'll be, <laughs> I'll be taking that shot now. Oh dear, honey lemon ice, but not tea. Technically, a dinosaur is an earthling. Technically. 
although they're not here anymore. Oh, I guess their bodies are here now. If their but if their dead body can be found within the Earth, are they were they not an Earthling? Now, what if an alien from another world came down and crash landed and then died on this Earth? Are they an Earthling? I don't know. I don't know. But the next thing that I want to do to really kick this thing off is there's a smokiness to it. There's a spiciness to it. I don't. I want to set things on fire. So usually, what you can do is you can flame. There are little. There's little lemon oils inside of this peel and those little dots that you see contain tiny little bits of oil that is actually incredibly flammable who knew so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna torch this i'm gonna put a little bit of lemon oil and try to uh express it over top of my thing here try to give it a lemony lemony smell to it and maybe also something smoky plus it's gonna look cool so flame on and then whoosh Honestly, that didn't look too exciting, but I did it. If I had the lights off, it probably would have been even cooler. Unfortunately, I don't have a I don't have a very good opportunity to do that. But that's that's my drink. That's my that is what I'm calling honey. Let's barbecue. I don't know if it tastes good. Maybe it tastes terrible. I honestly have no idea. We're about to find out. If it tastes good to me, and I'll, I'll try not to be biased. I will try to say if this tastes good, I will be honest about that. And if it tastes bad. I will also try to be honest about that. All I can do is try my best. We will never be perfect around here, unfortunately. Since Ling, as an Earthling, tends to be a living term ender, I don't think I don't think so that a dinosaur would be an Earthling unless they have been there a long. Oh, oh, the the alien, the alien who came to Earth. Unless they've been there a long time, an origin species term can't be found. You know, if an Earth, if an alien culturally identifies with the place that they are currently in i would say that they're an ing of that type if the if the alien who came from pluto is like i totally vibe with earth's culture man then i'd call them an earthling at least in spirit and honestly i can vibe with that what we have on our cocktail glass this evening is what i am calling honey let's barbecue there is a comma there and potentially some punctuation at the end i haven't quite figured that out yet and it contains mezcal uh honey liqueur or, sorry mezcal honey syrup get a little bit of saline solution in there um i'm gonna go get my book because i've actually forgotten what's inside of it and i i owe you the recipe that i've currently built it with it's one and a half ounces or 44 milliliters of mezcal one ounce or 30 milliliters of honey syrup three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of freshly squeezed lemon juice another three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of ancho reyes chili liqueur not the green one i found out that there's a green one the other day this is the not green one and then two dashes or two eyedropper pumps of saline solution which is just water and salt together and then if you feel so inclined garnish it with a lemon wheel and some flamed or a, a flamed yellow lemon oil peel thing cheers honey let's barbecue the kids the forbidden sequel see that's the scene that's the forgotten scene in honey i shrunk the kids where they walked into the barbecue and dad was like it's burger time the kids are like no dad don't and they all go up in flames it's the sad ending it's the true it's the true ending of honey i shrunk the kids honey let's barbecue let's see how it tastes actually how does it smell it smells like the mezcal it smells like things that i can't quite describe because i'm not really good at piecing those things out but it's i'm gonna try to like think on that for a little bit it smells like lemon i can definitely smell like the expressed lemon oils over top of it but i also smell the mezcal which means I know it smells, it's not the smokiness that I get from it. It's just like everything else about the mezcal that I can't quite piece out. But it's definitely mezcal and lemon that I smell right off the top there. And it's it's a good smell. It's a nice smell. I like that smell. Esther says, thought that was the ending for I blew up the kid. Honey, I blew up the kid? Well, did they go out in an explosion or did they go out in a fizzle? One never knows. This taste, however... okay first thing i get it's a little sour that lemon juice i think is powerful in the beginning but then the next thing i get is the mezcal wait, wait, wait. i think i got the mezcal at the end i need to try that one more time all right the first thing i get is the sourness of the lemon i get that first however it's not sour like it's not like sour like lemon juice it's sour sweet like like um excuse me, like lemonade. It's like lemonade -y. But then it moved into that smokiness of the mezcal 
and that other like thing that I'm piecing that I can't quite piece out with my nose, but I can definitely smell it there. I don't exactly know how to describe it. It smells like things that have burned, but are not actively burning. Like if anybody's ever been through through Epcot and they go up in the big ball and they smell like the burning fires of the, the, the Library of Alexandria, it doesn't smell like that. It doesn't smell like something that's actively burning. It smells like something that burnt. I feel like what I imagine is walking through like a burn field of trees the trees have already burned down. There's nothing smoldering anymore. It's totally cool. Everything's cooled off. But all you see is like the black soot of the area and area and it's the smell in the air of like, wow, something was burned here. That's the impression I get there. But then it moves into it a little bit more. The sourness kind of goes away. It lingers a little bit, but it becomes a little more sweet before clinching at the very end with that spiciness from the chili liqueur, which is nice. Honestly, I don't think it tastes completely like honey barbecue the way that I imagine it to be I feel like it needs more honey syrup in there and actually 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 it's my show I can do whatever I want to I'm actually gonna add a little bit more honey syrup into that because I think it could be a little more sweet instead of that little more sourness so I'm gonna try that just the oh just the smell of the char just the smell of the char charcoal has a smell so I think I get it it's like a it's charcoal e it doesn't smell like toast that just came out of the toaster oven because it was too burnt. But it does taste, it does, does smell like that smokiness. I'm gonna do and add a little more, I'm gonna add like a little spoonful more. I think what I'll do is I have a little more time that I'm giving myself for these recipes and whatnot that go up like on Instagram and stuff like that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna workshop this a little bit more to see if I can come up with like a final recipe before I put things live. I'm just gonna add a little more honey syrup in there. I think, I think it's warranted. And by the way, I have, um, the spork that I'm using, the thing that I'm using to mix this time, my mixing spoon, is a little, it's got a B on it from Disney World. It's, I don't know what the dude's name is. Anna would know. I do not know. But that's what I will use to mix this up further because honestly, I wish I had one of those, um, uh, what are they called? It's like the little wooden sticks that have the ribs on them where you, you put it in honey. I don't have anything like that. And I wish I did. All right, let's see if that even thing out a little bit. Ooh, you know? Okay, okay. It's less on the sour, which is kind of what I wanted. I didn't want a lot of sour in here, so I think when I go back and try this again, I'm gonna I'm gonna dial back on the lemon, add a little bit more on the honey. It's interesting. There's an ounce, there's a whole ounce of the honey syrup in there, so maybe it just depends on your ratio. If you did like a ratio that was more honey to less water, it would probably be more honey, but this is for something that's like equal parts. It's nice. Honey dippers? Is that, is that what they're called? They're just called honey dippers? <laughs> I thought there was must have been like a like a like a better name for them. But yeah, if it's a honey dipper, then I just I don't have one of those. I really want one of those, but I don't have one of those right now, unfortunately. I feel like the opportunity has presented itself to me to buy one, and I just I haven't gotten one yet. It's very unfortunate. But I think adding a little more of the honey syrup kind of it kind of this is a way that sourness, or maybe it's because I mixed it up a little bit more. It could be any number of things, but I think it evens things out a little bit more. What I really like about it is the fact that I get spiciness toward the end. It really does taste like like I just took a bite into a hot wing and it's been a few minutes since I've taken another bite. It's like, it's like I'm walking, it's like I took a bite at the dinner table, I walked back, sat down to watch more of the game and I'm like, man, I could use myself some water because my mouth tastes like there's sugar in it but also the fact that there's a little bit of spiciness that I could totally get rid of with a little bit of milk or another hot wing, which I like. I actually really like that. I'm trying to think of what other ways. I, honestly, I think it could probably do with even more. Actually, let me, let me write this down so I don't forget. Because I have my notes here for a reason. So I would say uh, more honey syrup. More honey syrup. More of the chili liqueur to add more of a kick to it. I could even I could even go with less lemon juice. I don't know, less question mark. And then the mezcal is good. Honestly, you could probably do more with the mezcal too. I'll do more question mark for that because it's not as smoke forward as I thought it would be. But that, I think that's good. Honestly, I don't taste the saline solution there at all, so maybe it's just not necessary at all, or maybe you need more of it, but I don't think it needs to get any more salty. I don't taste much of the salt in there, but it might be there, hiding, perhaps. Success then, maybe less ice, maybe less ice. It's, that's an interesting point that you bring up too. When I thought to myself, should I put ice in it? I was like, yes, I guess. I didn't really have a reason to or to not put ice into it. 
And that's something that I haven't really indexed well on when I'm making cocktails. I don't, like, if I'm making my own recipe, I don't necessarily know when to add ice or when not to add ice. I know there are some rules out there that I'm definitely not aware of, but like, all it takes is a little bit of, all it takes is a little bit of research. I could definitely do a little bit of research. And honestly, maybe with the more time that I'm giving myself, I will have the opportunity to do more of the research. That's good. Maybe less ice indeed. I don't know. I think maybe it doesn't need to be so cold like this. I mean, now, it's colder now than it was when it came out of the glass because it's been sitting in the ice and it's kind of being watered down a little bit. Maybe maybe that's where the lack of the sourness came from. I don't know. I, excuse me, will plan on working this a little bit more over the course of the week and I'll probably post whatever my final recipe is. I have a Discord that I post things on. There's a drinks channel. I have an Instagram now for cocktails. I'll put them up there too. And it'll all be in the description of the video that comes out VOD once upon a time or so. It will. I promise you that. One of the things that I try to make sure of, this is not a very, it's just not a very popular show. Not a lot of people watch, but I feel like the intent of having these out there is so that you as the user will be able to snapshot and send it to your friends. I, I don't really care if there's any like kickback that comes over here. I like the idea of being able to get like a random thing from a friend of like, hey, I just got this recipe that I found online. Cool, where'd you get it? Doesn't matter, it tastes great. And that's what I like to see. That's what I try to gear towards, to go gear things towards. However, obviously, if you like it, come back round for some more. I like doing it. So lots of ice, take it slow. Water is supposed to let you know how long it takes to drink the drink. So lots of ice means take it slow. I take this slow, honestly, I take that back. I can totally down this. This is not something that I feel like that I have to take my time with. It's very, at least for my flavor palette, if you like spice in your drink, and you like something that's a little more astringent, maybe that's your thing. Maybe you wanna add ice. I don't think I need ice. By that logic, I don't think I need the ice. Astro says he sends pics to your friends every week. Oh, that's so cool. Is that why a Long Island iced tea is infamous? Dude, Long Island's iced, Long Island iced teas? Interesting. It's like, it's like, it's a, I don't know. There's a shit ton of liquors in there. I don't think it tastes very good, to be honest. It's just like, if you want to get drunk and get drunk quickly, you can slurp down a Long Island iced tea. That's why they can give you a straw with that. If you want to, if you're into that. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily order Long Island iced teas because it's a, it's a lot of liquors in there, which means it takes a lot of effort to make, technically, unless they have a mix for it, which means they can charge you a lot for it. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think any Long Island iced tea I've ever had is worth the $15 that I would have to pay for it at a bar. I would rather make it myself with literally just, I, I take the bottles and be like, oops, I fell over with all these ingredients. I have a Long Island iced tea now. Oh, whoops, there's a Coca-Cola in it. And I'd be like, oh, it's a great Long Island iced tea. And I didn't have to pay basically anything for it. That's my opinion on it. If you like Long Island, if, dude, if you are the person who knows the science of the Long Island iced tea, I would love to hear about it. I want to hear what your personal experiences are about pretty much anything out there. Because that's the thing. I, one of the, one of the people that I watch, it tends to, you know, they're, they're a little more opinionative on the things that they do. And I think like, if you're, if you like hearing like somebody else tell you how it is, and that's the person to go to. I'm going to just tell you how I think it is. And if there's anybody else out there who like has a differing opinion, I don't have that perspective. So I want to hear that perspective to be able to make my own opinion. I have not had all the Long Islands of the world, but you may have had that one Long Island at that one bar in that one hole in the wall that really does it for you. And how would I, and none of us would ever know that unless you share for it. So, I mean, that's, that's the, that's the crux of it all. If you got something, share it. That's my, that's my wise words for the week, I think. I don't drink much, to be honest, but I want to. There's the spirit. Get it? Spirit. It's a pun. And Lorelai says, so it's like the Valhalla drink that had a little bit of everything. So it's garbage? The Zen Star? Yes, you're right. I do know that drink. And supposedly, it tastes terrible. But then again, in Valhalla, like, those spirits are more like chemical reagents. They're not really like, like, base spirits that we know and love. That's great. My OG bartender is dead, so I have to find a new one. Well... You always be your own bartender. That, that's what inspired me. Originally, I was inspired to be my own bartender because the stuff that I was drinking at my fraternity house just wasn't up my alley. People were like, beer? And I was like, beer? And then people were like, liquor? And I was like, liquor? And then they were like, liquor again? And I was like, all right, maybe maybe not so much liquor. And I was like, what about mixed drinks? I don't know. But the, the fun of the bar and doing all that stuff, it's fun. Lorelai says, we're really sorry to hear that. We are. R.I.P. in peace. Hopefully that bartender of yours is up there doing what they love in the great beyond. And if that's shaking it up, 
then that's perfect. If it's not shaking it up, then that's okay. You can shake it down. Shake it down and boogie a little bit. There we go. This is a strong one. I would consider this a spirit forward drink. I would not consider it a signature cocktail of mine. It still needs work. It's formulaic. It's experimental. It's new. It's exciting. It's, it's us. And that's what we like to hear. He was a chill bartender too. And hopefully most of these bartenders are. I, I don't, I, I haven't had an extreme bartender experience. However, if my bartender is chill, I like that. I like people who are chill. I like people who, when I say, I want the weirdest drink on the menu, they don't look at me like, why? What are you, a weirdo? I just like people who entertain me. I like people who humor me and say, yeah, we got weird things. We, we put creme de menthe and milk together. That's a grasshopper. Like, I like that. That's cool. I like the sound of that. That's a lovely thing. Well, the Astro's bartender would make drinks worth four or five shots and charge me as if it were as a two-shot drink. See, that's a cool individual. That's somebody who's like, I don't care about the man making me charge you for it. You're just a cool dude. I'm going to make sure that you have fun. And honestly, for having fun, that's what we're here for. In any case, thank you so much for coming to the bar, everybody. I appreciate your presence here, and I just like the general vibe of all. It's just something, if I haven't said so already, this is something I get to look forward to doing every week. And I keep coming back to it because it brings joy to my life. It puts a smile on my face and it's something that I can look forward to. Trials and tribulations. Life goes up and down and goes through hills and valleys and whatnot. But you know what? For some reason, this bar, that camera, these folks, these people feel like a constant there. A force of positivity. And I hope it stays that way. I know at the, at the push of a button, we could all go downhill. And I'm just kind of thankful we haven't gotten there yet. Trials and turmoils may be in the past, but they were also in our future, but so are happiness. So take that with you wherever you go. Ladies, gentlemen, and those who fall in between or beyond, this was The Bar. Thank you so much for coming along. I was warming up, actually. It was all a ploy. I'm playing video games tonight, as I always do. I'm playing some Hollow Knight. I like that game. It's fun. We're getting deep. We're getting deep in a deep nest. There are dark things happening. Dark things happening on the stream. Stay tuned for more. If it's the evening where you are, like it is where, where I am, have a good evening. If it's 5 o'clock where you are, because it's 5 o'clock somewhere... Happy hour begins, my friends. And if it's the morning, have a wonderful rest of your morning. Good morning, and I hope your day is absolutely wonderful in everything that you hope it will be. Thank you, everybody, so much. I appreciate it. Until next time, next Wednesday, we'll be back with another cocktail. Who knows what it might be? I literally have no idea. I do not plan these things far out in advance. They're spontaneous like that. It's a fun time. So party on, everybody. I'll see you on the other side if you're sticking around. If not, peace out again. Then, y'all. Bye. It was not what I was... What are you? It's a giant freaking spider! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what the hell is that thing? <laughs> oh my god! Okay. <clears throat>